Some, somebody in your film says that I could have made money out of this, but I didn't. I just gave it all away. Well, that's the plain fact. I, <laughs> I didn't try to patent it or something like that. That was not my idea. I, I just wanted to see what the heck the universe looks like. There are more people doing this than there used to be. Yeah. And if the amateurs don't do this, nobody else will do it. They th felt that the universe was out of reach. It's not out of reach. And somebody else would have made it in reach for them, even if I hadn't been here. That's all. This would have happened the same way as it happened, even if I hadn't been here. Somebody else would have had to do it. Like what Einstein said about relativity, if he hadn't done it, somebody else would have done it. But you see, my telescopes are not, are not an invention. It's a non-invention. They were tracking things across the sky for photography. And that's an invention. And it weighs half as much as a Ford. Okay? A machine to track your telescope across the sky for photography weighs half as much as your car. And we made telescopes that are a lot lighter and cheaper and are made to look through and don't track anything across the sky. Do the tracking yourself. So that's why I say keep your eyes open. If your eyes are open, you can get the information that way. If your ears are open, you can get information that way. If your mind is open, you can digest it. But there's a great deal, a great deal that has to be done on your part if you're going to collect information. The information does not bombard you like snow and hail. Well, maybe it maybe it does bombard you, but you have you have a raincoat. <laughs> knowledge is knowledge. It doesn't. It's not all divided up into fields. This much is chemistry, and this much is something else, and this much is astronomy. And the stars are made of the same stuff that the stuff in the kitchen is made of. So the change that shows through as inertia, the infinite shows through as electricity. And the undivided shows through as gravity and the, the attraction between plus and minus and between spin up and spin down. Energy is just what, had, what inertia does. Inertia fights changes. Oh, and that's why you have two pedals in your car. One to make it go when it doesn't want to go. One to make it stop when it doesn't want to stop. And a big wheel to change its direction when it doesn't want to change its direction. See, when it comes to inertia, that's where we feel it, in the car. As I so often point out, you see, you have an address, it's got a town name, it's got a district name, it's got a state name, it's got a country name, it's got a planet name, it's got a solar system name, it's got a galaxy name, and then there's the universe. It's not just 94115. In New Mexico, a friend of mine was giving a talk on the Big Bang. And uh, he said to the audience, Dobson doesn't approve of the Big Bang. The difficulty is that he's old enough to have been there. <laughs> it looks to me as though the Big Bang takes, the Big Bang model takes non-existence for granted and gets the universe out of nothing. Whereas what I see as my model takes existence for granted, but not space and time. Now what happened to me after that was that I simply examined the consequences of doing it that way. If you take existence for granted, but not space and time, you see all of a sudden that that existence must be not changing because it's not in time and not divided and not finite because it's not in space. Now it looks to me as though everything we see is the change of the infinite and the undivided showing through. There's nothing else here. Swami Vivekananda once said, there cannot, once said, there cannot be two existences, only one. People don't always understand that it's the change that's showing through is change, that it's the change that's showing through that we see as peace. It's the infinite showing through that we see as freedom. It's the undivided that's showing through that we see as love. Anyway, I, I don't think I'm the first one who noticed that, but I made a lot of I, I, I put a lot of underlining. 
our whole notion of what's inside is connected with our notion of what's outside and vice versa. We only have one universe. We don't have one for inside and one for outside. It's really not set up like that. Our notions about how things happen in space and time is related to what we see here. And it covers what we think about also. So it looks to me as though the universe is alive. And the interesting thing about it is this. If the universe didn't recycle negative entropy from the border, then there wouldn't be any negative entropy for living organisms in the universe. As I see it, if the universe itself is not alive, there wouldn't be anything alive in it. When Thomas Young ran into Darwinism, he thought how extremely stupid not to have thought of that. How all the evidence is facing you, how extremely stupid not to have noticed, noticed how it works. So I have the same feeling about some of these things that I've said, you see. How extremely stupid not to have noticed it earlier. <laughs>